Have you ever fallen for a bad boy? Come on, admit it, almost every woman has felt that attraction for a guy who's maybe a little rough around the edges. And that might make you wonder, why do good girls like bad guys, or bad boys as you might call them? Well, that's what we're talking about today. Why do good girls like bad guys? Nine reasons that your mom probably would never admit. Well, of course, welcome. And before we get started, do the big three. Number one, make sure you like and subscribe to the videos. Why wouldn't you? This is awesome stuff. Number two, turn on the notification, that little bell indicator next to the subscribe button so you get a little notification every time a new one comes out. And number three, make sure you leave me some comments and some good mojo down there, okay? Oh, and of course, make sure you wait till the very, very end of the video because I'm gonna tack on something right at the very end. I'm talking the very end. You know, movies often highlight this wild dynamic of the woman who falls for the wrong kind of guy. You've probably seen a few of them. This theme resonates because almost every woman can relate to it on some level. Every woman has had a man in her life that she just couldn't resist. She may have put up a good act, but in the end she either gives in or she ran away. And she might have even sensed that heartbreak was the only thing in her future with him, which is probably why she ran away. And she was probably right, but you know what? What a delight delicious little indulgence that is. Just look at Hollywood and the interesting combinations of personalities that come out of there. Perhaps the most, the classic example of good girl, bad guy of the last 20 or 30 years was when, uh, was it Billy Bob Thornton and Angelina Jolie were together. Now I'm gonna warn you that you gotta be prepared to look at your shadow self here today. I'm gonna point out some parts of your behavior that you might not want to agree with. It doesn't uh, agree with that whole angelic appearance that you wanna put on, right? But that doesn't mean it's not true. The bad guy that women love is not politically correct, which is why you don't want to admit you have an attraction for them. And also consider that you wouldn't admit these facts about bad boys and your attraction to them because, well, how would that make you look? if you admitted to other people that you liked these guys or you found them attractive. So what do you do? You keep it secret. That's what most women do. First of all, what are bad boy qualities in the first place? What makes a guy a bad boy? Well, number one, he's a manly dude. It's pretty obvious when you encounter a bad boy like this that he's definitely not a wimp. If anything, he oozes testosterone and manliness. That sounds kind of gross, oozing it, but you can practically smell this on him, right? In fact, you probably can. Most colognes actually do change their scent depending on your hormone levels and the way they react to your skin. So bad boys who wear certain colognes will almost always smell different than the average Joe who wears them. That's why you can not you can find the scent appealing on one guy, but not on another. Another bad boy quality, he's not a wimp. This quality is sometimes best described as being bold. A bad boy has a way of being more forward and direct with his interest when he, well, with whatever he says to you. Whereas a more beta guy will hold back what he's thinking. And he'll be more of a people pleaser which you know means he may not have the courage to back up his actions or to protect you later on. In fact, you can describe a bad boy in terms of how much he is not like the nice guy. Bad boy quality number three, he makes you feel safe. Mostly, when it comes right down to it, you know that the bad guy will make you feel safe because you know he's capable of physical action to protect you. Even if it means that this guy likes to start fights, well, there's a part of you that probably gets a little turned on by it. I told you, you gotta admit some of this dark shadow stuff, right? He's more of an alpha male, and that definitely gets your hormones racing, mostly because these guys are hard to find these days. Bad boy quality number four, he's more aloof. One of the less healthy traits is that a bad boy is often emotionally detached and distant. This creates a challenge for you, which makes you invest yourself and your time in him. Now, most women don't want to admit this. Absolutely, they don't want to at all, but most men are naturally attractive in this way. This is what makes guys attractive to women. Most guys simply don't emote very much. We don't talk about our feelings all the time, okay? Which makes you, what, want it more. Remember, I'm gonna say this over and over again, compared to a woman, every single guy that you meet is going to appear a little more aloof on some level, he's gonna appear, uh, appear emotionally withdrawn on some levels. And that challenges you. Watch out for that natural challenge pulling you into a relationship that you might not really be interested in. Yes, bad boy quality number five, he's a little bit of a narcissist, sometimes a whole lot of narcissist. This particular quality is something that guys demonstrate when they brag and they show off their bravado to you. When he's a little bit self-centered, that appeals to you because now you're wondering, how do I break into that? How can I take care of him? How can I get some of his attention? You wanna prove your value to him so that he chooses you as his one and only. 
All right, let's get into the reasons why you feel so attracted to these guys. Well, first of all, you want his babies. Oh, I know this one's going to create a major uproar. Maybe somebody will try to cancel me because of this, but it's the scientific truth. Women are much more attracted to bad boys during their most fertile part of their menstrual cycle. It's been scientifically proven. During the process of evolution, it's been shown that the females of all species look for the dominant DNA, the dominant guy, which means she's looking for men that demonstrate strength and power in those genes. And I'm talking about genetics, not the denim genes. Men do the same thing when they choose women. They look for the women that demonstrate the most health and fitness to bear their children. It's subconscious. It's science, people, okay? But all these traits that we endorse in the media originate in a signal that came from millions of years of evolution. Second reason that bad boys are so attractive to you is that it sets you free. Look, one of the biggest effects a bad boy has on you is to give you permission to be a bad girl. Women live their lives constantly trying to present themselves as being good and virtuous, and that act gets really old and really tiring after a while. You probably know what I mean. In fact, if you're truthful, it's exhausting to constantly have to look like this all the time. The beauty of a bad boy is that he gives you the safe space to act out some of your dark fantasies a little bit. In fact, he might even require you to, and then you get to be the bad girl, right? Reason number three, because you can't and you shouldn't. One of the biggest reasons that bad boys are so attractive to women is because you can't have them. In fact, it, well, it's a fact that we all want what we can't have. One of the best ways to make a kid want something is to deny it to him, right? Some people call this reverse psychology. And if it's done right, it actually almost always works. Whatever your parents told you was forbidden, you wanted more than anything else, if nothing more than maybe to go against the grain and prove your own independence. Now, if there's one thing that humans hate, it's to be told that they can't have something. Bad boys are a taboo. They're forbidden, like dating your hot cousin. <laughs> the more you know you shouldn't, the more you think, yeah, but what if? Reason number four, it's like fire and ice. Another big reason that you get drawn into these polar opposite relationships is because they're so charged, there's so much energy in them, and especially in the contradiction, it creates an exceptionally passionate love affair. And yes, the lovemaking is out of this world. Now, of course, the arguments can be just as volatile and passionate, which means you have to keep your head about you and not pick him just because, well, this guy is different. He's so different. It's really the intensity that makes this kind of relationship a very potent combination, and it makes you keep coming back to it. Reason number five, he's your new DIY project. Another big reason that these bad boys appeal to good girls is because he's always a little bit rough around the edges, right? He becomes your little self-improvement project because nothing proves your feminine power over him more than being able to make him change to suit you. Admit it even if he doesn't want to be changed, which is why, well, first of all, that's what most women figure out once they've started their own little pet project with a guy. Men don't want to be changed. We don't want that. We want to be accepted. If you can convince this otherwise unavailable guy to commit to you, well, that's going to prove at last that you're validated. After all, if you can pull this conversion off, you must be pretty damn amazing until that feeling wears off, which it almost always does. Don't worry, he will eventually run away from all the criticism and lack of acceptance that he's feeling. Next reason is it's like therapy. You didn't even know that you were in, right? In reality, when you pursue an unavailable man, it is really just playing out your childhood dramas and traumas. One of the most common childhood issues is when a woman never got the validation, the approval and acceptance that she wanted from her parents, one or both of them, usually dad. Men and women get pulled into relationships where all they ever try to do is just win the love and acceptance and the devotion of their partner. They're constantly wanting it and never getting it. Basically trying to get everything they wanted from their parents when they were kids, but now they're what? They're trying to do it with their loved one, with a significant other. Now it's a given that you'll probably ignore everything you just heard from me, not because you're dumb or you don't get it, but simply because your heart wants what your heart wants, as they say. When it comes to the emotions attached to winning a bad boy over, logic and rational thinking goes right out the window. Sure, it's got daddy issues written all over it, maybe even a whole bunch of mommy issues too. Sometimes it takes one of those 
good girl or one of these good girl bad boy relationships for you to finally start working out some of your little crazy right then again maybe you could just go to therapy once a week and avoid the insanity of one of these relationships hey you choose and the next reason it's a phase that you're in if you've dated the same kind of guy for most of your life you probably get to a point where you wonder why after all these relationships never work out so maybe he's not really the right kind of guy for you nice guys they suck i'll try the bad boy now he seems to know what you want more than you do and he comes along at just the right time in your life when you're ready for some change right you may not have ever dated a guy quite like this before which only adds to the novelty but that's really just a phase you're going through okay you don't need to date a phase you just need to get through the phase and hey the last reason you dig bad boys Ultimately, you will choose what you want in life. If you keep choosing guys that are a little rough around the edges and rebellious, that means you probably like that type on some level. After all, you're a grown up, you can choose what you want. However, we have to recognize that we make certain choices to meet certain needs. Some of your needs might not be so healthy. In the end, you have to look at your own life and decide if you really are a good girl and if he really is a bad boy. Sometimes it's just a potent mix of personality. Sometimes it's just childhood issues. Sometimes it's just a relationship you can't quit, okay? But if you wanna have a successful relationship, no matter what kind of guy you love, you gotta know how he's thinking and how he works. You gotta know if this guy really is a bad boy, right? Super important note, write this down. The number one problem women have is assuming that what they know about other women must apply to men too. Now think about it. You're intimately familiar with yourself as a woman. You're also intimately familiar with your friends, your female friends. You talk, you share intimate and detailed information with each other. You know women. But you know what? Guys don't work by those rules. We don't work quite the same way. I know, newsflash, right? In fact, if you assume that guys think and make decisions the same way you do, the same way your girlfriends do, you'd be very mistaken. And that is probably what's holding you back from seeing what he is seeing in your relationship right now. The number two problem women have is listening to other girlfriends who are not in successful and long-lasting relationships. Like my old mentor used to say, I don't get advice on money from some poor stockbroker who's living paycheck to paycheck and pretty much broke. I go talk to people who have money. In the same way, you can't keep getting advice from women who don't know any better than you about how to make a relationship work with a guy. That's where Carlos comes in. I've been advising men and women for years, almost 20 years now. I've heard every single story, every reason, and every excuse you can imagine. Now, what I did was I drilled down into the words to find the real reasons that men walk away from loving relationships. Stop listening to the lame, mistaken ideas about relationships. Get the real scientific truth about why men do what they do and get it from a man. You see, love is a science. You can learn it and put it to work for you right now. I got a great easy way for you to get started on this path right this second. Before you do anything else, go on over to this link you see below me here, datingfire.com forward slash free book. Datingfire.com forward slash free book. If you've been watching my videos and you haven't gone there yet, get to it. I'm going to give you a ton of free advice. I'm going to give you videos. I'll give you some great stuff in my regular VIP newsletter, and you'll get a copy of my free ebook, The Seven Mistakes That Make Men Pull Away. If you're wondering why he stopped loving you, if you're wondering why this guy is distant, the real reasons that men run from relationships are in this book. Go on over to datingfire.com forward slash free book. And of course, before you run away, make sure you do the big three. Number one, make sure you like and subscribe. This is awesome stuff. You gotta get more. Number two, make sure you turn on the notifications so you know when the next one comes out. And number three, leave me any questions or if you wanna suggest a video in the comment section below. Comment away. And of course, stick around just a few seconds. I got another great tip for you. Hey, this is Carlos Cavallo from datingfire.com. As always, live and love with passion. So another reason I didn't tell you that I'm sure you're probably aware of on some level is one of the other reasons that women date bad boys is to get attention and maybe shock your family a little bit. Let's face it, bad boys also come across as being almost celebrity light, right? They've got an edge to them that makes you think, hey, this guy might be in movies or something, or maybe he's gonna start a cult. 
Early in my dating advice career, I hosted events in Las Vegas, and one of the guys I discovered there was this veteran bad boy. He was this actor, but he was also a narcissist. He's kind of a long-haired rogue of a guy, but women loved him. Now, you could almost buy into this guy's persona until it started wearing thin, which is really quick. Bad boys seem a lot more valuable on the surface than they actually are. Not to mention the fact that a bad guy can actually be really good to get revenge against your family will probably make you maybe want to try dating one of them. Don't do it for that reason. Oh, and I got one more thing for you that you don't want to hear. The part you didn't know about? Your mom? She slept with her share of bad boys. She might never admit it to you or tell you, but I guarantee you she did.